We're now looking at the air à l'italienne from this suite in A minor by Georges-Philippe Telemann. And very little is known about this work other than it is thought that it was actually written at the beginning of the 18th century. But it wasn't published until 1936. Now, of course, at that moment, flute players around the world just leapt at it because they thought that it was for flute. Well, sadly, it was written for the recorder, but there's no harm in stealing another instrument's repertoire, which is what we've gleefully done with this. Now, the whole suite is a complete mixture of different styles of music, and this again shows just how fascinating a composer Telemann was. He wasn't just interested in writing things in a Germanic way. He loved music from around his vicinity. So he loved the music from France. He loved the music, obviously, of Germany. He even loved the music of Poland. And this is his Italian music. And it's a very beautiful piece, quite unusual, though, from the point of view that an air we assume is going to be a slow piece. But Telemann is always full of surprises, and we're going through this beautiful melody, albeit with its quirky little accidentals and dissonances from now and then, just to show us that he's kind of playing with our ears. And then suddenly in the middle, there's this crazy fast section, which has got nothing to do with an air. It's just an exercise in arpeggios and an exercise in articulation and finger work. And then it returns to the tranquility of the air on the return with ornamentation. The things we need to work on in this air are very simple. First of all, we've got to get the right sound. This would have been written for the recorder. And of course, with our magpie tendencies, flute players have stolen this from the recorder repertoire. Even if we play on a Baroque flute, the sound is going to be so different to the sound that we're capable of getting out of these modern instruments. Now, we shouldn't attempt to play as though we are on a Baroque flute, but I think what we've got to do is to be sympathetic to the period in which the music was written. So we don't want to have too forced a sound. We don't want to have a penetrating sound here. We want something that's nice and round. And we'll help this if we get the correct articulation. So often I hear flute players of all levels effectively spitting a note into the flute. And this, particularly in Baroque music, is to be avoided. We want something that's that much more gentle. So I would urge you to avoid t as an articulation, but go for something more round, something that's got more of a vowel sound after it, da. And in that way, you'll get resonance behind the attack of the note. And that will help then in terms of the phrasing. In all music, but in particular in music from this period, there are three things to remember, shape, shape, and shape. So with all the phrases that Telemann writes, make sure you create shapes. Make sure you create hills and valleys. Don't just play everything on the same level because in there lies boredom, not just for you, but for everyone who's listening to you. We have to be constantly sculpting shapes out of the phrases. Having enjoyed the serenity of the first section of the air, at bar 27, we hit the Allegro. And in the Allegro, we're suddenly thrown into playing arpeggios and articulating arpeggios very quickly. Now, this in itself shouldn't present too many problems, but once again, make sure that the articulation is light. The harder, the heavier the articulation, the more likely we're going to gradually grind to a halt because the tongue just can't move that quickly. But if we've got light articulation with the tongue dancing on the roof of the mouth, we'll be able to articulate swiftly and get to the center of the notes very quickly. And you'll find exercises to help with this in my book, The 28-Day Warm-Up Book. Having got the pyrotechnics and the fingerings out of the way of the allegro section of the air, we then da capo, or return, to the beginning of the piece. This time, though, we have to add little nuances, little extras in 
a form of ornamentation. And don't be frightened of this. With ornamentation, I always think of something a jazz musician said to me many, many years ago. He said, in jazz, you're never more than a half step away from the right note. And I feel that's very true in Baroque ornamentation. Classical musicians are reluctant to start doing things that they don't see printed on paper. But I'd urge you with the ornamentation on the da capo of the air, take a few risks. If it goes horribly wrong, you know not to do it again, but just see if you can actually put something together that's that little bit more creative. The ornamentation sections in Baroque music were designed for people to show off. So the most important thing to do is have a bit of fun with it.